What is the best smartphone gimbal for you? I have four of the latest three axis phone gimbals, including the Insta360 Flow, the DJI OM6, the Juin Smooth 5S, and the Hohem iSteady M6. They were all released in 2023 or in late 2022 for the DJI. And in this video, I'm going to evaluate them on 15 key points to figure out which one is the best. There are product links and individual reviews in the description, as well as timestamps if you want to skip around. Full disclosure, all of these brands did send me the gimbals to test out, but they did not pay me to say anything, nor did they review this video before publishing. Now, if you don't already know what a gimbal is, it's a stabilizer that helps you get steady footage with a camera. But there are more reasons than that to use one, like for shooting in low light, taking motion time lapses, or autofocus tracking. I have a separate video going over why you might need a gimbal in the first place, so check that out if you're interested. When it comes to gimbal size and weight, the DJI OM6 and the Insta360 Flow are the lightest, coming in at 340 grams and 401 grams respectively. The Hohem and the Juin are more robust and heavier, at 551 grams and 625 grams. Now both the DJI and the Insta gimbals are foldable, making them even more compact for travel. They also both have built-in extension rods of roughly eight and a half inches, so you can make your camera even higher. Meanwhile, the Juin and the Hohem Hohem don't have extension rods, and they can't be folded, so you have to use a carrying case for them. Now, all of these gimbals have a quarter 20 hole on the bottom, so you can add a mini tripod or another extension stick of your choice. But the Insta360 Flow is special because it also has a built-in mini tripod on the base. But one possible downside is that for the convenience of having the tripod built in, it's kind of on the short side. And so this is actually the shortest gimbal if you're just using what's included in the kit, and not not adding in your own tripod. The handle is also a little bit small. I mean, I have pretty small hands, but for someone with bigger hands, I could see how the Insta is perhaps not the best, unless you were to extend the mini tripod to extend that base. In terms of payload or how much weight the gimbals can support, the DJI OM6 supports the least amount at up to 290 grams, while the Hohem supports the most at 400 grams. Both the Juin and the Insta tie at about 300 grams for payload. All of these gimbals work with iPhones and Androids, and they have clips that clamp around the phones. Now the DJI and the Insta have magnetic attachments that are pretty identical. They're both made of metal and they securely attach to your phone. And all you have to do is pop the attachment point on the gimbal. The phone clips are also super slim, so you can keep them attached to your phone and still use it just fine. Meanwhile, the Hohem and the Juin phone clamps are built in and not removable, but they are more robust, so they can support thicker phones and their cases. All four gimbals also have built-in batteries that cannot be removed, and they are rechargeable via USB-C. When it comes to battery life, the Juin Smooth 5S reigns supreme with 24 hours of battery life. The Hohem has 18 hours, the Flow has 16 hours, and the DJI comes in last at six hours. And finally, all of the gimbals except for the DJI can act as an external power bank, and you can plug in a device like your phone to charge it. All four gimbals also support vertical shooting, but it is much faster and easier to do on the DJI and the Insta gimbals. In fact, when you first unfold them, they automatically power on and go into vertical mode. And there's also a button on the handle to switch between horizontal mode and back, or you can manually adjust the camera horizontally. It's a little more complicated to get into vertical mode on the bigger gimbals. For the Hoham, you have to flip it in a certain way to get the camera to flip and then maintain that hand posture, or you have to physically flip the phone vertically, which is also how you get into vertical mode on the Juin. So if you tend to shoot a lot of horizontal and vertical video and flip back and forth, it's much easier to do on the DJI or the Insta. Both the Insta and the DJI gimbals have a respectable range of motion, but it is pretty limited, especially in comparison to the Juin and the Hohem gimbals, which both have full 360 degree rotation. It's also much easier to film in lower angles. But I especially love the super wide angle mode on the Hohem, which lets you shoot with your ultra wide angle lens on your phone and not have parts of the gimbal in the shot. All four of these gimbals have similar controls on the handle. They have a front trigger button, a bunch of back buttons, and joysticks. The joysticks feel the most robust on the Juin, the DJI, and the Hohem, but it's a little bit small and feels more like a button than a joystick on the Insta. However, changing modes on all of the gimbals except for the Insta requires pushing buttons. On the Insta, instead, you swipe on the dial to change your modes. It can take some getting used to, but it is actually really convenient once you get that down. 
The Juwen and the Hoham also both have a big focus and zoom wheel on the sides of the handles. But the nice thing about the Hoham is that the wheel also controls the tilt, and there are two extra buttons here that you can use to set your start and stop points whenever you're doing a motion time lapse, which also means that you can do it using any camera app. To make a motion time lapse with any of these other gimbals, you have to use their dedicated phone apps. But the only gimbal here that has a display screen so you can clearly see your modes and your settings is the Hohem. The Juwen and the Insta have labeled light indicators to tell you which mode that you're in, while the DJI just has symbols that you have to decipher. As far as startup time or how long it takes to get the gimbal fired up and going, the Insta360 Flow is the clear winner in my opinion. All you have to do is attach the phone magnetically and unfold it, and it defaults to automatic mode, which is pretty spot on, and really the only gimbal here that even has an automatic mode. The DJI is similar, but it does have an extra hinge that takes some practice to place it just right. And when the gimbal is on, you then have to select the filming mode. Meanwhile, the Hohem and the Juwen have more axes that you have to remember to unlock and balance, so they're a little more complicated to set up and break down. These gimbals also lack automatic mode and require you to select a filming mode. The next point is a pretty big one, but stability. How good are these gimbals at actually stabilizing your footage? Now what I found is that they're all pretty good at stabilizing footage, and part of that is because smartphones have pretty good built-in stabilization, but it oftentimes helps to have a little bit of help, especially if you're going to be doing action or trying to run with your phone. And so the best performing gimbals, in my opinion, are the bigger gimbals here. The Juwen and the Hohem, because they're bigger, they're just more stable in terms of stabilizing the footage and giving you a smoother output. These other gimbals here also work really well, but they're just not as good as the bigger gimbals. In my opinion, the Juwen Smooth 5S is just a tad bit better at stabilization as a whole. Now the DJI and the Insta are also the most compact, which is great if you want a travel-friendly gimbal. However, if you want to add attachments or accessories or build a whole camera rig around your gimbal, they're not the best options, mainly because they're lacking the quarter 20 holes on the sides of the handles. But the DJI does have an area where you can attach counterweights. So if you're filming with a phone lens or just little accessories that throw off the balance of your phone, then the DJI is probably a little bit better for that compared to the Insta. But quarter 20 holes are useful for adding camera accessories like external microphones or monitors. And the Juwen has one hole on the handle, while the Hohem actually has three. But with that said, all four gimbals can support my iPhone 14 Pro with the DJI mic receiver attached to the base of the phone. You could use other microphones if they do attach to the base of your phone, but if they require a cold shoe mount like the Rode Wireless Go, then you'd have to have a way to add the cold shoe mount to the gimbal. The only gimbal that does have a cold shoe mount built in is the Insta360 Flow. It's kind of hidden here, but it's on the base. And it seems to really only fit the Rode Wireless Go receiver. I can't get other external microphone cold shoes to really fit in here. So it's a possible option. But if you really, again, want to add a robust microphone system or other accessories, then you're better off using the Juwen or the Hohem gimbals. Related to accessory attachments are fill lights. Now the Juwen actually has a fill light built into one of the gimbal arms. And you can also attach up to two magnetic fill lights. And you can change the colors by adding physical colored gels. Meanwhile, the other gimbal gimbals have fill lights that you have to buy separately. The DJI and the Insta lights cannot change color, but the Hohem light actually can change colors and you don't have to add any physical filters. It actually has RGB colors built in. That light also has a built-in AI tracking sensor, which is so cool because that makes Hohem the only gimbal that you can do tracking with without connecting the gimbal to a phone app. Since I mentioned tracking, let's talk about that because all of these gimbals do offer some form of subject tracking. But Hohem, again, is the only one that lets you do it without connecting to the phone app. All the other gimbals require you to use their dedicated phone app. Once you're in the app, you just drag a box around your subject to begin tracking, or some of them even have gesture control. Since I mentioned phone apps, let's talk about that because each gimbal has its own. So Juwen actually even has two apps. There's the ZY Cami app, which is what you use if you wanna do the tracking, or the Stockham app, which gives you extra features like a histogram and LUTs. I found that the Juwen app was actually the least intuitive to use. 
On the flip side, the Insta360 Flow app was actually really nice and easy to use. Part of it being when you first launch it, it has this really nice tutorial that makes it really clear on how to use the gimbal and how to use the app. And I found that to be super helpful. The DJI app was also very intuitive. It's the DJI Mimo app, and I know in the past, some people have had a hard time finding it in app stores, but I just looked today and I was able to find the DJI Mimo app in the Apple App Store. So it is there and it works really well. I haven't had any issues with it. So it's actually one of my favorite apps to use as well. Now the Hohem Joy app, I did find to be the most limiting in that all these other gimbal apps offer editing, but the Hohem Joy app does not. But it is really nice if you want to use the tracking option because you don't actually have to use this magnetic tracker. You can just use the phone app as well. And and other than that, I found it was pretty intuitive and easy to use. I just wish it had some in-app editing options as well. Next, let's talk about price. All of these gimbals are pretty similar in price, so they're clearly all competing with each other. In fact, the DJI and the Insta360 Flow both start at $159 US dollars for the gimbal alone. It's a bit more if you want to add the fill light. It's $209 for the Insta and $218 for the DJI but the DJI fill light does have top and bottom illumination, while the Insta is top only. Meanwhile, the Juin Smooth 5S is $169 for the gimbal alone, which does have the fill light built into the handle. Or you can add $219 for the combo, which includes an extra magnetic fill light, colored gels, and a really robust padded case. And finally, the Hohem is the most expensive at $210. And I don't even think it comes with an option to buy the gimbal alone. You actually have to get their combo. And that does include though the AI tracking sensor and the light module, as well as a padded case. You can even level up to $256 if you want a remote control and a full-on tripod included. So in conclusion, if you're planning to do casual phone videos, mostly in vertical orientation, and you want the smallest and lightest gimbals, then the Insta360 Flow and the DJI OM6 are your best options. But if you want an all-in-one package that includes accessories like the light and the ability to film in auto mode, then the Insta360 Flow is your best choice. But if you're planning to do more advanced shooting with accessories like phone lenses and filters, then you might want to use the counterweight option that the DJI offers. But if you don't mind having a larger, more robust gimbal, or you plan to build a whole rig around your gimbal with lots of accessories like a monitor and external microphones, or if you have an exceptionally large phone or a phone case, then the Juin or the Hohem are the best choice. Juwen offers more fill lights if that's something that you need, and the phone clamp is tight enough that you could use a GoPro or an action camera with it. And the accompanying phone apps are a little bit more geared toward professionals, and it does offer in-app editing as well. But Hoham has some really nice advanced features, like autofocus tracking without an app, an RGB fill light, and dedicated motion time-lapse buttons. So for me personally, if I'm doing a professional video shoot with my phone, which I'm actually doing more of these days because of how popular TikTok and Instagram reels are, then I personally would use the Hoham the most. But when I'm traveling and want something small that I can stick in my purse, then I'm kind of flipping between the DJI and the Insta right now because I really like them both for different reasons. And it's kind of a toss up for me to figure out which one I like more. So those are just my preferences though. You might have completely different needs for your phone gimbal. So let me know what you think in the comments below, which of these gimbals that you would choose. Thanks for watching, and if you're new here, I do videos every week on compact camera gear for filming travel videos and vlogs. So be sure to check out my playlist below and subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.